Hey folks, I want to talk a little bit about today about what some people see as an inaccuracy or um, error even in the in the Old Testament in the Pentateuch. We have in Exodus chapter uh, six, the Lord appears to Moses and he says, "Then then God spoke to Moses, telling him, I am the Lord or Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but I was not known to them by my name, the Lord." Now, that raises some issues for some people because they see that and they say, well, that's not true because God did appear to them by the name the Lord, right? We have that. We, all you have to do is flip back a couple of chapters. So, for example, in Genesis 28, you have Jacob um, having this experience with God, and then he sets up an, uh, a... Um, Sets up a stone as a marker. He pours oil on top of it. He names the town Bethel or the place Bethel. And he says, he, may, he makes a vow. And he says, if God will be with me and watch over me during this journey I'm making, if he provides me with food to eat and clothing to wear, and if I return safely to my father's family, then the Lord or Yahweh will be my God. Now, that's a problem, right? That that's a seems to be a discrepancy between what Genesis is saying and what Exodus is saying, okay? And so we have a, a, a conundrum, an issue that we need to deal with and, and, and try to explain that and uh, work through that, okay? Um, Christopher Wright in his commentary on Exodus offers what I think is a really good way to understand what's going on there. So we have a couple of different options. One, either the Bible is lying. Um, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's the case. You know, I, presuppositionally, I hold to the truth of all scripture. Um, so I don't think that can be it. Um, the other issue or the other thing is maybe Moses is an idiot, right? Maybe the, the biblical writer doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, so he's dumb. And that also has issues for our view of inspiration, right? And so if we're going to say the Bible is inspired, the Bible is the word of God, um, then we're going to have to figure out a way to deal with this passage um, saying that the Lord didn't appear to them as Yahweh, and then another passage where he, you know, Jacob does know his name, Yahweh, right? And if we're going to hold fast to this view of inspiration, to a view of the verbal plenary inspiration that says God inspired scripture, um, it's, you know, holy men of God spoke because they are moved by the Holy Spirit, um, Second Tim uh, that, I don't know what passage that is, but uh, First Peter or Second Peter, and then Second Timothy talking about um, all scripture being God-breathed, that causes some issues, right? If we're going to say it to how, on how to deal with this issue of Exodus six, um, so Christopher Wright presents this talks about um, anachronism, and <clears throat> anachronism is um, when you refer to things in the past in an incorrect way, right? So, for um, example, um, you have. The movie um, Tin The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. And Charlton Heston raises his arm at one point and his sleeve comes back and you can see a wristwatch. That's an anachronism because historically wristwatches were not invented, right, in Moses' day. So in this presentation of Moses, there is a historical inaccuracy, okay? And so that one is a uh, bad historical inaccuracy um, because obviously um, we look at that and say like, oh, there's a historical error. There were no wristwatches then. Okay. So that's one type of anachronism. Another type of anachronism that Christopher Wright points out is um, not as problematic. So he gives the example of talking about Queen Victoria. And you could say when Queen Victoria was a little girl, she played with blocks. Now, Queen Victoria was not Queen Victoria when she's a little girl. So calling her Queen Victoria is actually an anachronism because it does not, it is not an accurate way we're referring to her when she was a little girl. But it's not lying. And the person, the person saying that is not being stupid because they're using a name for this person, Queen Victoria, to describe her in a way that the audience will know exactly who this, who is being talked about. It's Queen Victoria. It's not some other Victoria. Um, it's this person. When this person was a little girl, right? And so it's using an anachronism, a um, historically inaccurate way to refer to her. But everyone understands exactly what they're what they're saying, right? Everyone knows exactly uh, who Queen Victoria is, and they don't accuse the author of being an idiot or a liar. Okay. And so Chris Wright says that's what's going on in <clears throat> with this passage in, 
in Exodus. Like he's saying, okay, we can uh, harmonize or figure out what's going on between this passage saying the Lord didn't appear as Yahweh, but then also having references to Yahweh in before this before this chapter in Genesis, because the author of the Pentateuch, I hold to Mosaic authorship. Other people hold to different. Um, different authorships and they have another way of if you don't hold the mosaic authorship this isn't really a problem because you can say oh it's another um an, another another writer or an editor stitch this stitch this in together this is a, a problem that's unique to people who hold the mosaic authorship um and so what christopher wright points out is that in genesis the author of the the author of genesis who i think is moses is using a way to talk about this God, this God that Jacob experienced. He's using the term Yahweh or the name Yahweh because that is exactly who his audience would have known or understood this God to be. So even though Yahweh may not have appeared and said, look, I am Yahweh to Jacob or to Abraham or to Isaac, like he does, in, like he does to Moses in Exodus 6, the audience would have still known Yahweh, right? And Moses would have still known Yahweh. So he's writing this, Moses is writing this and using a name for God that he knew. So he's not being disingenuous. He's not lying. He's not um, being stupid. Uh, he is using a name that he knew God by, right? And so he's saying, putting these words into into Jacob's mouth, saying, look, this is the God I'm going to serve, and um, clarifying that this is Yahweh. Now, another issue that's raised by this, so you like, you know, you like kind of solve one problem, uh, and then you ha have another problem, is uh, was Moses not accurately recording the direct speech of Jacob? That's a video for another day when we talk about um, the way, we'll, so we'll talk about how the biblical writers wrote and the um, literary conventions. So for example, uh, when you get to the book of Acts and the um, speeches and sermons, those were not um, th those were not ipsissima verba, verba, the exact words. They're ipsissima vox, right? The voice, and so he he's not giving the exact the exact words. Uh, he is under the direction of the Holy Spirit, according to Timothy and Peter, giving the conversation that happened right and so um we it would be anachronistic of us to accuse moses um or luke in the book of acts of um inaccuracies or plagiarism or inaccurately reporting or something like that if we were to force our literary conventions on them so that's an, that's that is another problem for another time but um suffice it to say that when um one way that you can resolve this tension between Exodus 6 saying, I didn't, I'm appearing to you as Yahweh, I appeared to them as God Almighty, um, and various passages in Genesis where we do find the name Yahweh. One way to solve that problem is to think about the author writing in a way that he knows, he understands that this is Yahweh, the audience would understand this is Yahweh, and so he feels comfortable using the name Yahweh in the same way that we can say Queen Victoria played with blocks, even though when Queen Victoria was playing with blocks, no one knew her as Queen Victoria and certainly would not have called her that. Okay. All right. I hope that helps. I hope it makes sense. Um, it, it helped me to work through that. Um, and so hopefully it will help you as well. If you guys have any questions or anything you want to talk about Old Testament related, I'd love to do it. Um, just shoot me an email or put it in the comments below. Thanks so much. Thank you.